Most people say, I don't have a purpose. My life is meaningless. I've got all these problems. I have nothing. I don't know why I'm even here. Well, you have to look at the everyday. Where am I teaching and where am I learning? Where am I a mother figure? Where am I a father? Where am I a connector? Where do you recommend someone to something, a person, a business, a service, and connect people and they go on to have a good experience? Maybe you connect friends. Where am I, and then where have you taken an experience that you have gotten over, like something challenging? Like maybe I've never uh, had a death happen to me uh, before, but you have. So you're much, you can actually help mm. someone through that more than me. So we all have these purposes. So what I always say is, where do you start? You start by saying, where at, where do I have, where do I serve a purpose? And then we go from there. I think that would be one way. It's not instant for sure. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Life Hack Show, a series of interviews with exciting people who've built successful careers and businesses by taking action and getting more out of each day. Very much what we believe in here at Life Hack. My name is Carl Pauline and I'm your host for this show. Today's guest is Alice Inouye. Alice is an award-winning author and life guidance expert who has dedicated her life to helping others find answers to life's challenges. As one of Hawaii's thought leaders, and celebrated experts, thousands of individuals have found clarity over the past 20 plus years through her work. Her unique brand of life wisdom is featured in her eight books on self-growth and happiness, as well as in her long running column in Midweek, Hawaii's largest publication with over 200,000 readers. Alice has combined her vast set of skills and talents with her entrepreneurial drive and opened Happiness You, a business with a purpose to help individuals find unprecedented clarity. Thank you, Alice, for joining us today. Now, as I was learning about you, uh -huh. I was reminded about something I learned a few years ago, which is the secret to happiness is fulfillment and having like a growth and contribution mindset. Well, you've mm -hmm. learned languages, done TV presenting, astrology, become an ordained <laughs> minister, studied feng shui. Oh my God, you English did in research. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not to mention that you've written I've counted eight books, but maybe there's nine, nine we're now. now at nine. Nine. Yeah. yeah, I thought so, <laughs> nine now. So how is this kind of, I would describe it more as like a growth mindset. I mean, and because you obviously have this interest in growing yourself. When did this or how did this manifest itself? I think that's a great question because you brought it to a perspective that is interesting. You said growth mindset, obviously you want to grow, you have to, you want to learn a lot. So that's cool. Most, I'll just say 99% of the people along the way said, what is what is wrong with you? Why don't you just focus on one thing? Like mm. you, you never stick with one thing long enough to be able to really delve deeply into it. But I think when you ask that question to me, it's the idea that there's so much to learn. Um, a PhD person would know a lot about a small segment of something. I guess for me, I'm just more interested in life. And every single thing I've learned has taught me something about life. And so unbeknownst to me, all this desire that I had of doing multiple things, living multiple places, learning, talking, all of that actually led to me being able to do what I do, which is I call myself a life expert simply because I feel like I've gone through so many phases of life, talked to tens of thousands of people that I got it. So it, to me, it was really a, a, an interest more than anything else. Mm. I, I'm kind of reminded about some way back in the 18th century, long before my time, uh, in, my in, time. The, <laughs> in the UK, uh, the I suppose it was the aristocracy and the well to do. But one of the mm. things that young people, it was almost like a rites of passage, which was they had to go on what was called the Grand Tour. And the Grand Tour from the UK was to go into Europe and to spend a year or two years in Europe. Uh -huh. I don't know if you would describe it as discovering yourself, but discovering the world. Yeah. And I think perhaps yeah. maybe in ways we've yeah. lost that a little bit because we get yeah. so, you know, it's our country, we, we stay there and we don't pick up that perspective. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I get mean, it. Before, yeah. Yeah. Before we were talking, you just mentioned about, you know, the, the three places that you've been. It's like you grew up in Taiwan and been to yes, Japan, Japan. And, and now live because you didn't start in Hawaii, did you? You started in. No. I started in, believe it or not, born in San Francisco to right. very a strange parents, let's just use that word, and mm -hmm. somehow ended up as a child in Taiwan, which is not something I wanted, but I was forced to learn the language and to develop the understanding of cultures. Then you think Asian cultures, they're all the same. Well, you would know in South Korea, 
Korea is very different from Japan, very different from China or Taiwan. And then going to Japan and realizing like, oh my gosh, they're so opposite than Chinese people, reserved versus open. So I guess it's just life. You're right. Everything is a reflection and we can learn no matter where we're at and where we're going. I just had this un this relentless desire to just accomplish and achieve and learn. And most importantly now, I feel like I can use it now to to help others. Mm. So that yeah. that's helped you to get a so when you're faced with a challenge or you're faced with a problem, you you theoretically now have yeah. three different perspectives that you can look yeah. at. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you one thing that has really helped me is judgment. We mm. all have we all judge others. Like we go, oh, why did you wear that outfit? Or how come you did that? It doesn't look a good or whatever, but I think that understanding cultures or having 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 a global perspective, whether it's about your life or living in a place where you see it, you realize there's no one right way. There's no one right answer. You have to find out what's true for you. That's one of the most important things mm. to me. You know, my my wife is Korean, and we we actually have this joke. There's a thing in Korea that when you get married and you go off on your honeymoon, you wear the same clothes. Now, coming from the UK, it's like no, 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 no. You never do that. <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, over the years, I've kind of softened to that idea saying, you know, if we ever go on a holiday, why don't we just have the same sweatshirt? Or... <laughs> but even my wife now goes, no, no, no. <laughs> um, but to me, I mean, when I first saw it, it was kind of, you know, when I first arrived, it's kind of like I was going, ho, 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 ho. but now I'm just mm -hmm. going, ah, that's nice. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of changed my approach to it. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And I think that's kind of what we have to do throughout life, right? We're, it's so necessary as we're walking this path of life to be open to new things and not judge them. Because mm. I find that that's how we find value that we mm. can bring into our life. And as you opened up, you said happiness, fulfillment. Uh, how do we know unless we're open to what is possible for us? Because mm. we don't know ourselves sometimes. We grow up thinking we know who we are. And then we get caught up in life and we're not happy. And then then what happens? I need to spend time knowing my, I need to go to a, a retreat. I got to find out who I am. So it, 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 it behooves us to to know every day who we are and what we need, I think. Mm. Yeah, you know, you know, you're right there. So going back because you've had a long career. Um, I was I was kind of curious about, well, you're doing like kind of you're helping people now. You're helping people find happiness and, and fulfillment. But where was the trigger that got you into that? There must have been something that happened yeah. in your life that made you went, what I'm doing now is not what I want to do. I want to do yes. this. I want to help people. You are so intuitive. Yes. This is the big thing. People will say, oh, you're always smiling. You're so happy. You must have been born to happy parents, lived a really happy childhood, so happy that you grew up wanting to open a business called Happiness You and Share Happiness with the World. But like you said, in fact, it was completely opposite. I was born, I think I was born not smiling. Um, I, I All the pictures of myself were not smiling and I always complained. I didn't like where I was, I didn't like the people. And then we moved to Taiwan, I didn't like it was smelly and it was just, I didn't like anything. So I had created such a negative reality about myself from such a young age that it actually led to a lot of these, what you would call eating disorders, mental disorders, I was 40 pounds heavier. I was eating to, um, you know, I had eating disorders. Like I was not happy. I was like not happy at all. But I didn't know there's such a thing called happy. I didn't know what happiness was. I didn't know you could find happiness. I just knew my life sucked. One day when I was in, I think I was 20 years old. I was, uh, I graduated from college. It was my final year of college. I went to college in America, in California. And someone passed a note. We didn't have text back then. Someone passed a little note. And I, it had my name on it and it was a hundred people in this final class and I opened it up. Don't know who it was from, but to this day, I remember it said, Alice, do you even know what happiness is? Are you ever happy? And that to me was where everything changed. I never knew there was a possibility. Like I didn't even know. So I've, I've, I think the next 20 years was sort of my search, like what is happiness? And then once I found kind of similar, you and I talked about different things, like once I found that I loved learning and I could actually learn something and change my life, learn something and change my life so much so that I became healthier. That's how I knew, like, I, if I can do it, anyone can. That's how it started. Hmm. I think you just hit the nail on the head there about learning something, which a lot of people do. They do that part, 
But then they don't go into that next part, which is taking what you learned and changing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, applying it. Yeah. Now, one of the interesting things is you don't actually have to apply it everything because some things you're not ready for i find you're not ready to change some aspects but there are other aspects that you are and it's part of that journey isn't it it's part of that you know you might go i mean i was it three years ago i think i did tony robbins's um unleash the power within event oh, yes. in uh -huh. singapore which is just an wow. incredible event yes uh, yes. but it's four days and it's really really intense but I remember doing that first one when I came away, I was at the airport traveling back, um, listening to the soundtrack. <laughs> I was like really hyper. Yes, yes. But I remember thinking, oh, I didn't need to do this bit and I don't need to do that. Bit. Um, but I do need to do this bit. And I changed certain parts of my life. Mm -hmm. But over the years, because I've, I've continued to do the UPW each year, but now I it's done virtually or has been because of the lockdown. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, it's like a little like. Wow. Now I get it. Now I know why that bit is important. So it hasn't. Yes. you don't change everything immediately. You change what needs to change first in order for you to make the changes later. Good point. Just like when you're about to start out on a journey, what you need is never available to you. You want to start a business. You want to go on a trip. You don't have everything at first start. You just have the luggage or you just have like the business idea. And then you start walking. As you walk, you start getting all of these different um, support coming in. So it's sometimes it's about trusting the journey, but yeah. you have to start. They say that all the time. You got to start. So you do, you have to start. But like you said, it's almost like some of the stuff we learn is held in the cloud <laughs> of our, yeah, yeah. Of our, our brain. Mm -hmm. And when time comes, all of a sudden it drops into your, into your, into your life. And that's to me, mm -hmm. truly. Yeah, Those light bulb moments think, ah, now I get it. Now I know why this bit is important. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's so true. And then one of the other things that's so important when it comes to happiness, it's funny that I just got off a presentation and I talked about how people think that the purpose of life is to be happy. Like the people will say, oh, you deserve to be happy. You know, life is meant to be lived. You, but I'll just tell you, the purpose of life is not about happiness. The purpose of life is about growing and learning and evolving and finding more and more of who you are and what you're capable of. To me, that's the purpose. So if I, if the purpose of life is happiness, then all the crummy stuff that happens to me, I'm gonna be like, well, I'm not living a purpose because all this bad stuff is happening. So I think that the mindset, how I've been able, I'll just say how I've been able to move into uh, why am I so in a good space in my life? I think it's because I accept that I, have to accept the good and the bad, the positive and the negative, and the whole of it is what makes life good. And if I can accept that and I'm growing through it, then I'm fulfilled and then I'm happy. So it's a little bit backwards. We sometimes look for things to make us happy when in fact, we actually have to accept where we are in order to even get there. Mm. Actually, it's funny. Uh, I, I remember I, I heard you in an interview talking about um, everything has uh, an equal and opposite, pos uh, positive and a negative. So happiness yeah. has sadness. Yes. Um, you know, Polarity, busyness has yeah. not busy. There's a polarity. Yes. You're right. And and uh, I found that really fascinating because I thought it's just like there's likely to be two two ways of looking at something. It's either bad or it's either good. I mean, it can be in between, but it's going to be either bad. A, a bad thing, what one person might think is a bad thing is happening. Another person is going to see that, okay, this is an opportunity to grow. And yeah. that yeah. is a, when you get that mental, that mind, in a way, it's that mindset shift from thinking there's always going to be bad things, but it's also an opportunity. It's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to yeah. learn. I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or yeah. it's going to think, yeah. okay, I'm not skilled enough to deal with that yet so i need to improve my skills you're going to learn something so i agree yes absolutely yeah. and this whole thing about the polarity of life if you think about it we all want more good who doesn't want more good more positive i want to have a good day nobody wakes up in the morning and says i want to have a bad day i want to see negative people and i want to fail i think we intrinsically have this desire to grow and to experience good but the reality of life is that we live in a polar world. We have up and down, left and right, hot and cold. We've got North Pole, South Pole. We've got day and night. We've got anabolic, catabolic. We have all these different things that are going on that are polar. So life can't be any different. We can't just say, I want all good and not bad. So the approach to me is like, you're like, okay, life is like two sides of a coin. <laughs> One <laughs> coin is life. There's two sides. Uh, it's so valuable to recognize that that you can't have one without the other. 
you yeah, can't. Yeah, so yeah. you may as well accept it. And once we accept it, that's where the process of of happiness, if we can use that word, uh, comes in. Mm. Is when that's, we accept, like, oh yeah, that's mm. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so where would somebody find happiness? What would they have to do? Uh, to find happiness okay. is the way that say most people would define I mean I I find defining happiness actually a very difficult thing to do because it will be different for everybody but, everybody. but you know, where would you go about yeah finding happiness okay hmm. what, let's just say happiness is what makes you feel good mm -hmm. okay different for everyone so happiness happiness we have 100 people here so um, and everyone's like I'm not happy so hmm. where, where do you really start would you agree that when you are doing something meaningful or purposeful that you feel good, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would you agree? Like mm -hmm. if you are helping somebody uh, open a door that they can't open it and they say, thank you so much, you feel good, mm -hmm. right? Or whatever it is, when you accomplish or achieve something, there's something about us, we feel good. We feel good that I learned this thing that I couldn't do. I moved through that. So we feel good. So how do we start? We start by saying, and again, we, we can't get something that we don't see exists, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, we have to start with what we know. We have to start with what we have. We have to start with what we see. And nobody likes that. People always want instant fixes. I want to be happy now, mm -hmm. but it's a process. So if someone says, I really, really want to commit to my own personal happiness, which is simply doing things that make me feel good, we have to start with the basic, and that is asking yourself a couple questions. And, and these are questions that start to show you that you are a meaningful part of this world. So these are simple questions. It's questions like, where do, uh, where do I, where do I, here's a, let's start here. Where do I teach and where do I learn? Again, polarities. Where do I teach? Where do I learn? Where am I teaching every day? Uh, where am I learning every day? So we probably can all identify, oh, I'm learning from YouTube, or I'm teaching my child how to brush their teeth, or I'm teaching executives how to coach, right? Mm -hmm. Then we say, well, where are you, where do you provide a nurturing aspect to people? And where do you provide a support? So where are you a father figure? Where are you a mother figure? So you start asking yourself, oh, where do I ask somebody for a cup of coffee? I buy coffee for someone. Where do I receive something? Where do I provide structure? So you start asking yourself simple stuff to recognize that you actually have a purpose. Most people say, I don't have a purpose. My life is meaningless. I've got all these problems. I have nothing. I don't know why I'm even here. Well, you have to look at the everyday. Where am I teaching and where am I learning? Where am I a mother figure and where am I a father? Where am I a connector? Where do you recommend someone to something, a person, a business, a service, and connect people and they go on to have a good experience? Maybe you connect friends. Where am I, And then where have you taken an experience that you have gotten over like something challenging like maybe i've never uh had a death happen to me uh before but you have so you're much you can actually help mm. someone through that more than me so we all have these purposes so what i always say is where do you start you start by saying where at where do i have where do i serve a purpose and then we go from there i think that would be one way it's not instant for sure yeah, you just yeah. reminded me of an inter. I was watching an interview last night, um, and the the host created his uh, podcast yeah. because he'd actually gone through depression, then severe depression, and then a suicide attempt, Ugh, and yeah. he failed fortunately. But he created this podcast because he wanted to teach people how he got out of okay, yeah. that spiral of depression. Yeah. And I, mm -hmm. you, what you just said there has just yeah. reminded me of thinking, yeah, yeah, everybody, no matter who you are, has something to teach. Yeah, and true. that yeah. is that life desire, which most people completely miss. But we do have a desire to contribute. We have a desire to help yeah. people. Yeah. And it's hidden yeah. because modern society has kind of hidden it, but it's there. Yeah. And it's yeah. really built into us. And when you start teaching or helping people, yeah. it's like, OK, now I've got my purpose. And I yeah, find and that so people, many people discover right. their purpose once they realize they've got something they can teach. Yes, because otherwise, see, the thing is, you have to give value to it. Some people, oh, that doesn't matter. All I do is help the old lady next door. That doesn't matter. If you don't value what you are doing, you'll never find what you right. want to do. You have mm. to put value into every moment what you're doing. And you can judge yourself. You can say, oh, I'm a lazy person. I don't finish this. I don't do that. 
but that's okay. You can be a human being, but look at where you are making a difference. And even in a small way, because that starts to build, because if you can't grow it, if you don't know it, like you have to find it. Like purpose is not out there somewhere that you're searching for. You're living a purpose now, and maybe it's not the purpose you want, or it doesn't make you happy, but that's because you're looking at all that's not working versus looking at what is working. It's Mm -hmm. so simple, but we, I just feel like it's so simple, but we're so conditioned that it's Mm -hmm. so hard to turn back on, onto whatever I'm talking about (laughs) to me. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I've seen that so many times, and it's also, but from my own experience, my, my own life experience, I've just go, ah, yeah. <laughs> like the, you, every few years, you'll get this light bulb moment, and it'll just go, ah, ha, 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 now I understand. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's what Steve Jobs said, you know, you'll never be able to connect the dots going forward, but you connect the dots going backwards, and yeah. it does. It, it somehow, eventually, it does make me, it does make yeah. sense <laughs> eventually. It does. And I, what I've come to understand is that there is whatever you want to call it, but there is some something that allows each person in this world to go through exactly what they need to and have the help exactly when they need to. There's something, I mean, again, I have, I, I, I've, I, um, I do, I've worked with like a lot of people and and over a long period of time. So I have some clients that I've literally followed their lives for like 22, 23 years, Mm. like followed and seen the ups and downs, the deaths and the joys and the births and the death, like all of that. And somehow you, like you said, looking back, there's a purpose and a meaning for everything. So what if we, as we are walking, instead of looking back, we recognize that every moment, even if it's not the destiny I was hoping for, fate will step in to move us towards whatever destiny it is. Mm-hmm. So we have these desires for what we want, which is I want to feel good. I want to be happy. I want to have love, money, whatever it is I want. And yes, those things are out there, but there's such a need to establish where you are today just to embrace that. And that's what most people don't. They don't embrace it. They just say like, like, oh, this is not what I want. I want something better. This is not what I want right now. I want something better. And you'll never get better unless mm-hmm. we bring better into the moment. Yeah, and it takes yeah. some time, like it boiling does. a pot, it's boiling a pot. You can't just put a pot on the stove, turn on the heat and like a minute later go, what's the, what's the matter? There's, this isn't boiling and turn it off. <laughs> and then later go back, I need hot water, turn it on. And then you can't, you have to turn on the heat and just keep it going. And that's one thing I can promise anyone that if you have a desire to work on yourself and you put time and energy into it, you will find and draw forth the situation, circumstances, people in, mm. and teachings that you need in order to get what you want. So it does start with attitude, mindset, desire, but an affirmation of today. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So so you're you're helping lots of people, but you've done lots of things before that. Yeah. Which I was going to yeah. ask you for, because as you mentioned that you are approaching 60 or are 60, and yet you have oodles of energy. Where does that come from? <laughs> I think honestly it comes from feeling inspired Mm. by life and imagine this imagine if you're a person that wakes up you're like oh my god what do i have i have to do this i gotta do this gotta take this person there gotta do this report gotta deal with this coworker i don't like you're dealing with a lot of energy drain versus waking up and saying oh goodness i get to be on a podcast today with carl oh i get to do this presentation. Is it challenging? Yes. Did I have to prep? Yes. But the idea here is that we're looking to what we are getting from the day versus what we have to give to the day. And I think that's where it changes. And people say, well, you don't know my life. My life is sucky. I have these problems and those problems. And I get it. We, I, who doesn't have a problem? Like, is there anybody out there that has not one problem? We all do. Um, but it's, again, it comes back to how are you looking at it? What are you getting from it? We have to find seeds of positivity within the day. Otherwise, we can't grow it. And those positivity seeds, let's call them, first time I ever used that word, but positive, they actually can lead to more energy. So for me, it's knowing myself, knowing that I can only, I can only coach for eight hours a day. I, if you do more, I, I will spiral down into negativity. I just know my limits. And as much as I want to help people, I have to say no. So learning how to say no, learning what you need, 
all of that, being able to feel comfortable speaking up for it while still being graceful and not offend people. It's all a lot of work, but mm. I promise anybody who's listening, if you start to get to know yourself, your yourself has a voice and the answers are there. And so the energy comes from when you do something and you feel good about it, that's where we feel energy. Yeah. Right. If, if I told yeah. you I'm going to take you to like your favorite concert tonight with your favorite, your favorite artist, you'll have you could have slept three hours, but you'll have boundless energy because something that inspires you. If I told you you got to come and work at my at, at the at the field and you're just like, no, I'm too tired. I don't have time. We make excuses when we don't want to do stuff. So I think mm -hmm. it's the energy is really finding, find, moving yourself to a place where you feel good. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, you mentioned there about negative people, and that's something that uh it doesn't matter where we are in life and how much we try to make our environment a positive environment. There's always going to be negative yeah. people pulling you down. And usually sometimes mm -hmm. one of the things that people will find is if they want to change something for the positive in their mm -hmm. life, there's going to be somebody perhaps at work or in their community who's going to yeah. say, why are you doing that? That's not good. And mm -hmm. they're going to drag you down. So, and it really, it can really affect your happiness and yeah. sense of well being. Do you have any tips on dealing with those yeah. negative people? Yeah, I do. Actually, what you do is you say, thank you so much, because if life is polarity, you're you can't. And that's the whole thing I said, accepting that there's two sides. But like this is how I see it. The more negativity you can handle, the stronger of a leader you are. If you're a small lead and you lead your life, I'm not saying you have to lead a company. If one person is against me, and I can't stand it. I got to work on accepting that there's two sides to it. So what I what I what I say to that is I now in in no one knows me, but here in Hawaii, there's like a community. I write, I do all the stuff publicly. Do you know I get more negative feedback than I've ever had in my life? People that don't like my concepts, people that think I, I'm all about this or that and just like whatever their opinions are. But the more I see it, the happier I get, because if I have 10 people that write in a negative comment, I know that there's 10 people I impacted positively. So my job when I deal with negativity, and like you say, like if someone's negative and pulls you down, that simply causes you to reflect and say, am I doing what's right for me? So we have to give value to what you are doing, more value to you, less value to other people's opinions. And negativity will all, and if it's there in one form and you can manage it, then you don't have to worry about it coming in all kinds of other forms. So negativity is actually great because we, we we grow on the edge of of negative and positive. If it was all positive, we get all fat and bloated and we'd explode because <laughs> like, there's no <laughs> challenge. If we get too much negativity, we burn out. So whenever there's negativity, it's almost like you have to say thank you. Is it a form I can handle? Because if I can handle it in this form and this is all the negative, great, because there must be all this other positive. So it's how you look at it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I know if I if I post one of the funniest things I find is if I post a YouTube video, I'll probably for for every hundred likes, there's going to be one or two dislikes. No, and what like, know why? I know, yeah. and I I just kind of kind of laugh at that because I think well, two percent, I'm happy with that. But what I find in most people is they their brain will just automatically focus on the negatives, yeah, you know, the negative comments, the negative the, the dislikes or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, but you've got a hundred likes. And people saying thank oh. you. People are actually writing thank you in your comments and and cheering you on. And yet you're focused on that one or two people who decided that I think of it as they are jealous of you because they're not doing what you want to do. And that's something I would if anyone was starting a YouTube channel and they do get negative comments, I always say when you get a negative comment, click on the person's um profile and yeah. go look at what they're doing i says i can guarantee they have not produced one video they don't know what it takes and yes. it says, you don't need to listen to people like that but if it was somebody who's got five million followers on youtube and you've only got a hundred you listen to them because yeah. they've done it they know what they're doing but somebody who's never done it don't listen and there's value in everything and then you mm. see the person that's never done it before is simply offering his perspective is, is it, it, what is your perspective on what you just shared? Obviously you wouldn't share it if you didn't want to. And then this person is offering his perspective, but we value it because there's a higher uh, legitness about his comment. So that's a great, uh, one thing that you went back, you talked about hunters and gatherers and all of that. Hmm. We have a negative, um, 
Did you know that the, the, the stats, our studies show that we are drawn to the negative three times more than the positive. Yeah. So for every one negative, we need three positives to, to neutralize it. We need six positives to actually feel good about it. So we go straight to the negative simply because we want to protect and defend ourselves. But yeah. I think if you use it to like, if, if, we, if you want everyone to like you, no, not everyone's going to like you. You want everyone to agree with you, that's not going to happen. We live in a fantasy of what we think life should be when actually life is as it is people are negative people will beat you down and that's all part of your growth it's mm. it's all this one perfect picture that we put together and it doesn't mean that you don't feel stuff it's just that you recognize like damn it this is in my life now and once you transcend whatever negativity you're in you can call it hell once you transcend one level of hell you think you've reached heaven the next level of hell is going to come to greet you you're never going to be without hell we live in this positive and negative is always there so if you're dealing with more negative then eventually the positive will come but we have to look to see how it benefits us it yeah. sounds so easy to say it's hard to do but once you do it and you get into a habit that's how you own your life that's how you start to cultivate your self-worth and your self-manifestation yeah, I mean, it's funny. I, I I have this phrase that I use when when I hear negative comments directed toward me. Say, oh, that's an interesting perspective because yeah, I'm using the word really... interesting, which in my eyes is a positive word, and perspective yes. is neutral. But I've taken yeah. that negative and just added something positive, mm -hmm. like it's an interesting perspective, which mm -hmm. means I'm not disagreeing with them. I'm not mm -hmm. either agreeing with them. I'm just thinking. Oh, that's an interesting perspective. And I, I use that yeah. phrase internally. It's just my internal phraseology right. when I'm yeah. dealing with negativity because um, it realizes it it sort of like removes me from having to adopt it because yeah. now it's sort of saying an interesting perspective means it's somebody else's. It's not necessarily mine. Yeah, because everyone has an opinion and you do too. So if we think other people's opinions are more important than ours, then we're going to subordinate it to it and we're never we're going to be waiting for approval from this outside voice where... Whereas, yeah, and it is, it's not easy, right? Because we all have our insecurities and we all have our things, but it's that consistent focus on what you, what you feel is right for you is it, gonna, it's like a muscle that you build. So over time it's strong enough so that you see it and then it doesn't impact you the way it did like before. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing I do want to ask you about is with your uh, happiness, you, um, one of the things you got on the website is about you you helping people to be become more get more gain more clarity oh, um, yeah. and i i find the word clarity is always fascinating to me because i've realized that you know being clear about what it is you're doing and going after and what you want is really important so how do you help people who probably feel that life is just overwhelming them right now gain clarity I think it's to say that we accept there's a lot of complexities that aren't going to be solved in the moment, but the clarity is what do we do today? What is one thing you can do today to move towards greater clarity? I don't think any of us are super clear on all aspects of our life, um, the mm -hmm. future included, but I think that's what it is. Helping people find clarity means sometimes they focus on the wrong thing. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, here, here's a perfect example. This guy says to me, oh man, you know, I don't make enough money and if I, this job, if I had more money, I could buy nicer gifts for my friends and I would buy better gifts for my family, right? So he's all blaming like the fact that he has a sucky job, they don't get paid enough. So I said, wait, 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 wait. So do you do you have a, a, a bank account? Yeah. Do you have savings? Yeah. Do you have a credit card? Yeah. Okay, so you're not buying expensive gifts for people, not because you don't have the money, it's because you're choosing not to because you'd rather save for your children's school. You'd rather save. He never saw it that way. He said, so own your decisions. Don't be, don't blame the company or other people. Like you can, if you want to, you're just choosing not to. So that's the kind of clarity. Like don't fool yourself about something that you're actually owning. So it's, that's kind of like a, a way. And then yeah. he, from now, that was last year. And then this year, he's just like, man, that was just one thing you said that brought clarity to why I don't spend a lot of money on gifts. Yeah, it's it's, an it's another one is that I I found is it's quite similar to like you know the past is there to educate you the present is where you need to be now yeah and yeah. the future you have no control over anyway so don't worry mm -hmm. about it um yeah. it's what you do today will affect the future but you don't really have any control over the future because right. it hasn't happened yet so right yeah. now as you say today what is it that mm -hmm. you could do today that yeah. will move things forward. 
Yeah, and that's true. And then the more you do that kind of operating, the more you trust yourself, your life, the moment, the easier things unfold, the more you trust that if a negative comes, you'll handle it. It's just that it takes a while to get that water, that kettle to boil. It doesn't just happen with one positive thought. It's a mindset. So it's almost like the commitment to if you want to exercise and you want to be healthier, you commit to walking or jogging or lifting weights, whatever that is to get to a goal. Mindset is no different. We're so lazy. We believe every thought that comes out. We, we, we believe stuff that we're told that we never researched. So we're just have a bunch of garbage sometimes in our head that we're living by. That's our map. And no wonder we're not happy. So we have to start to just kind of identify where are our belief systems off? Like, where are we looking that's not taking us in the right direction? So that's what I mean by clarity. It's almost like a compass. Like, yeah. Are you headed towards yourself? Uh, yeah. And that's not selfish. People say, oh, but I have to think about others. What about my kids, the community? It's not. It's like you got to know where you're at and we can then go from there. And that's kind of the, the dialogue that happens. Mm. Well, the one thing that I usually work with is like saying, well, if you don't take care of yourself mentally and physically, you are not helping anyone. You're the burden. You yeah. become the burden. Yeah. So it's yeah. your responsibility to take care of yourself mentally and physically so that you are the helper. That's what you want to do. But if yeah. you don't, you're going to be the burden to everybody else, which is probably not what anyone wants to be. Yes. I can't imagine anyone saying, I want to be a burden to others. No. Yeah. And so that's the thing. But we end up being that way by our stubborn mindset of life sucks. These people mm. don't know what they're doing. Look at the government. Look, like we, we all of this talk. But sometimes if you can go change something, you don't like go change it. But a lot of stuff we can't change is going on out in the world. You can't. So you may as well come back to your life. You wake up with yourself. You go to sleep with yourself. No one knows what you output throughout the course of your day. Only you know that. So why wouldn't you spend more time being a friend to yourself? And that's mm. where we sometimes we fail. Mm. Um, no, absolutely. Of not really, not mm. really listening. And it's and I get it. We have to be. It, and I think it's an, a balance again, a balance between altruistic, all that I give out, and narcissistic, what I take for myself. If you're overly altruistic, you give everything away, you have nothing left for yourself. You're overly narcissistic, everything is about me, nobody wants to help you. So it's okay. like, how do we find that balance in life so we can have that give and take? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. True. Now, a question, a question that we ask everybody uh -huh. um, to kind of like wind up the interview, which is, at Life Act, we believe that life is nothing without the time to live it. What is one thing that you would regret if you're not investing enough time in it and why? Wow. And you didn't even give me a prep. No. Nope. <laughs> All right. I've been asked every question, but I, mm. but that one, I guess the first thing that comes to mind would be um, a little bit more investing time and understanding uh, finances. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason would be that now that I'm nearing, let's just say, I'll just call it my last third of life or fourth or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. I think that um, it's, 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 it's wise to understand, um, I don't mean budgeting and, and spending money on credit cards and stuff, but I just mean like just how to invest your money wisely so that at a certain point in time, you really can, uh, you know, live a, live a, live a, a, a life of abundance, I guess we can call it that. Yeah. Yeah, so I no, guess that would be it. Yeah, it's an interesting one because I was thinking, you know, when we're in our 20s, we don't mm -hmm. generally think about our, um, you know, finances. We don't think no, about that yeah. long term. Because one of the things I remember about my 20s, I'm immortal. I don't care. Right, <laughs> um, right. It was only when I was about 35 and um, if we'd been out for a few drinks or something, the next morning and the next three mornings, <laughs> I still felt it. And that's when I started to realize I was mortal. Um, when I was in my twenties, you know, it just took a half a day to get over a hangover. Now I don't even go there because I know it takes too long. Um, but one of the things that I never realized until I probably got into my forties was, wait a minute, at some point, maybe I want to stop. Maybe I don't plan to stop, but maybe I want to stop. Yeah. Could I do it? And the answer was, well, not now. And that's, that was my, you know, waking up. I wish I'd learned, yeah. started putting a little bit away from the first job I had, which I know is in some textbooks, you know, put 10%, 20% away yes. from your first job. We never do. And at some point no. it's like, oh, I got to do something. So no, that's that's, yes. a, that's a very good one. <laughs> I just thought that was good because I started happiness you when I was 50 and 
of course you have whenever you start a business you have dreams it's going to help all these people you're going to financially be fine it didn't go the way i wanted so i the first three years it was just oh my god what did i do i spent all of my life savings on a space and nobody was showing up i'm paying rent and all of this stuff so it it, it that's when i realized like whoa I, i'm 50 and this is not going well and that's that if you say that but then thank god thank god everything started turning around we started moving forward but still, yeah, I still think that would be one thing I would like to learn more about. Like, how do you start when you're in your 60s? <laughs> so, start at any time. That's the good thing about it. That is the truth. And mm, I, yeah. I just I think that would be anything, if nothing else, just to learn more about it, because I am interested yeah. in it, but it's not one something I want to teach. So I haven't got, yeah, gotten yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah. that's well, a great question. I know. I know. I love that question because it gets people. Ooh. And they start to think about it. I know. I very rarely, I told you when you started to ask me anything, I'll be able to answer it. And that was like one question. I was like, wait a minute. I don't know. But that is true. Yeah. Something like yeah. along those lines would be yeah. valuable. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Alice, thank you so much for talking with us today. It's been um, a real pleasure talking with you. And uh, all the best with um, Happiness You and everything thank that you're you doing. so much. <laughs> so appreciate it, Carl. Thanks for your time and all of your insights. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you. Thank you to Alice for such a tremendous talk. Now, if you want to develop a life of variety and fulfillment, Lifehack's full life assessment will set you on your way. This assessment will give you the jumpstart that you need to begin your journey towards a full and meaningful life. Lifehack designed the full life framework to help you to excel in not just one area, but all important areas of your life. With practical ideas and actions, that anyone can understand and practice and achieving all this while overcoming real world constraints. Understanding where you stand now and where you want to be is the first important step in your journey. Full details of this assessment are in the show notes. Well, thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you again in our next show.